Hello, everyone. This is Oris Jenkins. I publish a blog called Chester's Children about my family history and genealogy. And I am making this video as a sort of tutorial on this database that I've created called the Black Terrells of Greshamville. Um, it's featured on my website, which is orisjenkins.com, um, the same place you would go if you wanted to hear my music. Um, you can also just come up and click genealogy in the middle here, um, or just orisjenkins.com slash genealogy, and that takes you to Chester's Children, and then you scroll down to the Black Terrells of Greshamville, and that will take you to this uh, database that is being updated um, whenever I get a chance to. Um, so basically, Greshamville is in Greene County, Georgia, and uh, this page chronicles the lives of people that were enslaved by Thomas Terrell or Thomas Terrell uh, in Greene County. And I do switch between both pronunciations of the name Terrell or Terrell. Um, so here's the introduction up here where I explained how my ancestor Albert Terrell was from Early County, Georgia. So I thought, um, and through DNA research, I realized that he was actually born in Greene County, which is quite far, about 200 miles away. So it was kind of a surprise to me. Um, but I was able to actually find his name written on the inventory of this Thomas Terrell, who was the enslaver. When he passed away, they had to do an inventory of his estate. And uh, this inventory was done exactly 200 years ago on November 22nd, 1822. So I transcribed the inventory and that's the first link you can see here. You click it, and zoom in, you'll see exactly um, what I saw, um, the number, of the person enslaved, their name, a description they use. The first page is all men and boys. And then the second page is all women and girls. Um, the appraisal amount, they were assigned a value um, of monetary you know, value. Um, I've estimated the birth years of these people. Uh, and also I've traced who inherited um, these enslaved people, some of them, obviously some of them are blank, uh, and some, most of them actually were sold, but uh, a few of them I've actually traced who inherited um, this, these enslaved people as they were considered property at the time. I've also added some notes if I found out that they survived to 1870 and they have a, a job, or I might have uh, suggested that they might be someone um, in a different place on a census. Um, I found that Jefferson went to Claiborne Parish, Louisiana. I know it's him because of DNA. Um, so I've also added some notes here. Um, and I do want to mention there is actually one boy on the girls page, and that's my cousin Edward. So I do want to shout that out that um, in case you're looking for him on the on the men's page, he's actually on the girls page. I'm still not sure why. Um, if you want to see the original document, that link is also here, takes you directly to the document on Family Search. So I'm going to click that. Family Search is a free genealogical research website. Um, you do have to have a login, you know, you have to sign in, um, but it is completely free. And that's where I first found this document. And if you zoom in, you can see right here the inventory and appraisement of the estate of Thomas Terrell Sr late of Greene County deceased. And I always like to just scroll down and pay homage to my ancestor, number 32 on here, Albert. This was the first time his name was ever written down. So I do honor this, even though they have this value attached to him. I know that he was a priceless human being. And uh, that's what I am... Uh, here to celebrate today is that he lived and survived um and then the you see the other items that thomas had and his property um and eventually you get to this date november 22nd 1822 these are the people that did the appraisement 
continuing down the page, I just gave some background on Thomas Terrell and his family. Um, these enslaved people were in the possession of many of these people at different times. Thomas had uh, quite a few children, and five of them never got married and never had any children, and they stayed together on the plantation. Uh, so it was a very unique situation, um, but at some points you'll see his grandchildren are involved, and there's a lot of, uh, a lot of connections here. I compiled all of the records that involve these enslaved people, and I linked to it right here. It's another spreadsheet that goes all the way from um, the first census that I found Thomas on from 1820 to, of course, his death. Only he died actually uh, in 1822. And the inventory that I just showed you is also linked right here, as well as another copy of it. There's another copy of it on Family Search. Um, so you can see that right here. If you ever get a record that's turned around, just click Tools and then turn it around. It only goes left for some reason, but here you see it's still the same inventory, but a different copy of it. Um, oops, wrong link. Oh, still wrong one. Oh, I have to go back because it didn't uh, open a new tab. So I'll click back. Um, so we have Thomas's estate inventory records. We have his daughter's will. We have some tax records that list the number of enslaved people. There are some deeds on here. There's the news ads for when um, Thomas's son, David Shelton Terrell, sold um, 44 people. Um, 30 here, and then we think probably 14 here. Uh, you know, more censuses, more probate, probate stuff, um, some receipts, grandchildren, and um, and finally, the only record that's from after slavery is the slave narrative of uh, Evelina Stepney, who was uh, interviewed in the, in the 1930s about her life living on this plantation. So all of those are linked here. Um, most of them are family search records. All the links are from free websites. So there's Georgia Historic Newspapers is free. And this is the Library of Congress link uh, that has the slave narrative also free. So there's no paywalls to view any of these records. It keep scrolling down and finally we get to the actual profiles of these people. Um, so I just kind of put some of their names up here. Uh, cropped from the inventory and other records just so you can get a sense of you know their names um, see them actually written I don't have photos of most of these people but I did include this list of several of them I don't even know how many are on here right now um, this is a lot more than the people that were on the inventory but people that were born after that point um, and there's a long list of people. I'm hoping that people will be able to find their ancestors on this list and get more information about them. I include the names they used, first and last, um, estimated birth years, birth locations, death years, death locations, mother and father, any spouses they might have had, and any enslavers they might have had. Um, some of these ended up outside of the Terrell family, uh, either by being sold, um, or some other reason. Um, some were gifted or some were actually hired out, like uh, rented out, really. Um, so there's all that information on here for all of these people, as much as I can, as much as I have figured out so far, all the way down to Winnie Terrell Jackson is the last person. So make sure you keep scrolling uh, if you haven't gotten down to W. Um, and that's the main thing on the page that I want everyone to uh, be aware of. But, of course, I still have more. Here are the photos that I do have. There's only four of them. And I'm still grateful to have at least that. These are photos of just people that have actually been, that were actually born um, during slavery. 
So I do have photos of some of these people's siblings, actually, that were born after 1865. But these are the ones that I have of those that are born before. There's only four. I also included some stories of people, uh, including my own ancestor, Albert Terrell, um, Albert, Ariane, Celia, Columbus, Edward, who's the person I have the most information about, as you can see, um, Evelina Stepney, who I talked about earlier, Luke, who was Edward's brother, a lot of information about him, Jack, Mitchell, and Pleasant, and I'm going to keep adding more stories as I get um, some really cool information about certain people. Here's a collection of obituaries for these people that I found in the newspapers. And, and also this one is from a book. You can click on them and it will, um, you know, expand the image. Some marriage records for the people that were enslaved on this plantation. This was really cool to compile because I realized that a lot of these people were married by the same ministers or even on the same day in the same place, which is really interesting to notice. Um, some were married by ministers that were, are also members of this plantation, these plantations. So uh, it was very interesting to put that together and realize that. Also death certificates for some of the people. Um, the earliest one I have, I think is this one, is Luke from 1881 which is interesting, where his wife actually applied for widow's um, assistance, and it has his actual death date on there, which is pretty interesting to find. I included a map uh, just so people can get a sense of where Greshamville was. It's in between these two rivers, Green County, very close to Buckhead, which is in uh, Morgan County. Um, but also, if you scroll out, um, or zoom out, you'll see its position between what I call the three A's, Atlanta, Athens, and Augusta um, in Georgia. And lastly, there's an index here. It's by last name um, of any of the names that I mentioned in that last spreadsheet. They are all indexed here by last name. So you can kind of search if you have an idea that your last name is tied to this family, you can go and find that name. And that is the Black Terrells of Greshamville. Um, I hope that this database is helpful to people. And I hope that if anyone has any more information that should be added, um, please let me know. I'm going to be adding a descendants section pretty soon so you can see all the great people that have descended from this plantation um, and these people. But for now, that is it. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope you all have a wonderful day or night or whatever it is, wherever you are. Thank you.